Hello and welcome to LEA's Our Voice, a podcast designed to keep our individuals, parents, guardians, and friends in the know. I'm your host, Mike Leon, and as always, we welcome your comments on this podcast and your input on what you'd like to see us talk about in the future. Send those comments to this email, podcasts at le-academy.org. That's P-O-D-C-A-S-T-S at L-E-A-C-A-D-E-M-Y dot O-R-G. Some of our folks would like to work and others can't. The Medicaid system wishes that every able-bodied person receiving Medicaid and that's, that type of support be engaged in some kind of work. It is well understood that some of our disabled folks would likely not be able to work. And for the individuals that can, many parents have their druthers worrying about potential working loved ones, Medicaid and Social Security benefits. There are transportation issues, work hours, and the many worries about both. In this segment, you'll hear how to determine who may or may not qualify and info on income limits without affecting the benefits. Also, on how assessments and input with your supports coordinators may be involved, as well as a few tips on transportation issues. So back for this third installment is none other than Tony Plua, advocate, professional parent, county and state board member. Tony, welcome back again. Wow, Mike, thanks for the really nice welcome. Please, for the listeners, have a paper and pencil available because I'm probably going to give you websites and telephone numbers you may be very interested in. And again, we will uh, we'll put these, you'll give those to me, we'll get them on our uh, podcast page so they can copy those down so okay. they know what's involved in this particular uh, podcast. Yes. Let's get started. Um, Tony, would you please give us a rundown of what the Medicaid system expects from a developmentally disabled individual who is able-bodied enough to work in the community, and also the federal government expectations on the same subject? Uh, Well, first of all, some of the basics on Medicaid. Medicaid and the federal government is one and the same. Essentially, it's it's an insurance-type benefit that in conjunction with the Department of Justice, simplified in how it works, the U.S. government has a prepaid amount for each recipient that they send to our state and, and, and then off to the county. And in our county, just for your information, Macomb has about 16,500 Medicaid recipients that, that use this prepaid per capita amount. The goal that Medicaid is using this money to spend is it gets people closer to their full potential, and it will actually forego poverty. And we right now have too much poverty. Absolutely. They are they're, they're very interested in reducing the adult daycare-type services for able-bodied people. And right now, i got to share a story that I just was touched with. It was some years ago. This was about a fellow that if you looked at him, you'd say he wouldn't do a thing. Totally nonverbal, young adult, but very able-bodied. This happened in Rockville, Maryland. It was in, uh, I saw many programs during my travels uh, when I was previously board members. One was with the National Society for Autism. And this fellow got a job, and back then it was involved with a a paper recycling plant where the paper that was color was usually more shiny and uh, uh, could not be recycled with regular newsprint. He stood in the middle of a huge yard where a truck would come in and dump the recycled paper He's, his job was to stand there and recycle the color to the black and white. He was so dedicated. He would be angry the day that he'd have to have a day off. Huh. And, of course, that pleased uh, the employer because this is a job that was probably the worst job that a person that was normal would want to work. The atmosphere was dirty. It was loud. But this character, who couldn't even speak, was in heaven in there and drawing a paycheck. 
And what what that was part of what we discovered with the Americans with Disabilities Act. It was born, his system supplied a job because of the the uh, the desire to get full potential out of somebody that was looked like he was not useful at all. It was a really touching story. Anyway, uh, the Medicaid system is a strong supporter of least restrictive environment, and you'll see more about that a little bit later. Thanks. An individual approaches their mom and dad and says, I want a job, I want to work. For this discussion, let's say that individual is capable. How would a parent start the process? Well, the way that starts is you, you set a goal in your PCP, and that's with your supports coordinator. Right. So that's the first place. Now, there may be some, there may be an assessment process involved. Your supports con- coordinator is the one that can tell you whether it's not worth a chance or whether your chances are poor or whether your chances are good. You'd get some input there. <clears throat> also, the folks that work uh, in the daycare programs, like the LEA, there are opinions that, that could come out of that. Anyway, between all of those happenings, the, your supports coordinator may, if, if it's felt that that person is capable, will route the uh, request over to the Michigan Rehabilitation Services, and that's sometimes referred to as MRS. And I have a phone number here if you want to take it down now. Otherwise, it'll be something that'll be on your screen later. It's 586-412-1510. That is 586-412-1510. What they do is they do an assessment and a job intake and select three or four jobs as options. Now, one of the things that's very important in my son's case, he was very interested in the environment. A lot of the things that we could teach him in a workshop didn't really transfer well enough to the very place that he would be working. So Ron saw options like food prep at... uh, a local restaurant, and I mean, it was so amusing when he came home with salad dressing all over his head and his face. We knew that wasn't going to work, so that one was out. The other one, a couple of them, he was a a lot jockey in a a Kroger store where he would bring the uh, shopping carts back in. That didn't work out for a couple of reasons. But one of the reasons, one of the things that Ron wound up with was he was spent five years, he worked for five years and drew a paycheck that long at a Kmart store. Mm. He was in the back room of a Kmart store unloading pallets of shoeboxes. He would take a shoebox, empty the contents out, and you know if you don't want that stuff out on the sales floor. So Ron's job was to take the contents out of the shoebox, put the shoes back in, load that back onto another cart, which somebody else took out onto the floor. What oh, that's he, right, the shoes that Kmart's, they're up on a rack. They're not boxed. Yes. Some of them are not boxed. Some of Some them are boxed, yes. Yeah, back then, uh, I think the supplier there was Florsheim or something like that where they wanted boxes. Tom McCann, too. Or Tom McCann's, yeah. That, uh, how did you know that? <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> anyway, Ron had a great... Uh, 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 experience with that. But what happened, what made it good in Ron's case, we established a couple of times ago that he was fascinated by spinning objects. Yes. So the fan was sitting right next to him where his work site was. The music from his radio station was right next to him there. And the boss came in every once in a while and wanted to see what he was doing. And it's a good thing that we told the boss what to expect on day one. Mm -hmm. Because Ron would say, Get out of here, you know, because I don't like the clicking of your shoes. You know, she had these shoes on which would click on the floor. Mm -hmm. Now, what would happen in a normal world if you told the boss to get out because your shoes make noise? 
wow, uh, that was, but anyway, it happened for Ron. And also part of the job that he did was he took the trash out to the uh, trash compactor. Mm -hmm. During that, his walk along the back of the store, he bumped into the, many of the employees there, which after a couple of years, they turned around to love him. And, of course, we didn't teach him well enough about what to do at the cashier's window. So when he was hungry, he'd go and steal a, a candy bar. He'd <laughs> start eating the candy bar, not pay for it, and the cashier would actually pay for it, fund it. I thought that was the lovingest thing to do. That's what you get when somebody is disabled. People, people feel uh, good about you and... We eventually taught him that he can't take candy bars off the rack. But anyway, that was Ron's success story. Um, but that's, that came out of the Michigan Rehabilitation System, and that's one of the things that you get there. There's another one that I want to leave a phone number with you. It's Social Security actually has a program called Ticket to Work. The, it's an 866 number, 968-7842. That is Social Security's ticket to work. Plenty okay. of information in there on resources, what you can do. There's another one that Social Security does. It's called a Red Book. And the website that you can go on and read this Red Book is ssa.gov slash Red Book. It is a tremendous source of information. And then there's another program called Work Incentive Planning Assistance. That's WIPA, Work Incentive Planning Assistance. There's a telephone number there, 866-968-7842. And uh, I think that's enough information to equal a drink from a fire hose. There's a lot there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Appreciate that. Um how does working in the community help a developmentally disabled individual be more independent and self-sufficient for their future? Well, first, repeat that, Mike. Uh, Tell us how working in the community helps a developmentally disabled individual be more independent and self-sufficient for their future. Well, first of all, <clears throat> most everybody else does. Lots of your normal people move into the community and work. Now there's a sample that you can sell your disabled individual. And the important thing to remember is that to do that, it's gainful activity. It increases feelings of self-worth, fulfillment, and freedom. It promotes, it, it promotes <clears throat> developing personal choices. And it reduces poverty. That's right. When payday comes. It also increases the public's perception of disabled folks. That's the part that I like the most. We need to offer some suggestions for barriers an individual faces that could prevent employment, like transportation to and from the workplace, length of work hours. Can we touch on that? Sure. I'll tell you a couple of things about transportation. Uh, first of all, in our family, we drove them back and forth. Uh, but that's not going to work in every family. No, I would say, you know, with every household, if you have parents that are getting up in age, that is They're tough. They're going to quit that, yes. If it's not the case, uh, parents have to be willing to to go that extra mile for their employee, for their person served. So. I agree, and when you're done driving or whatever the case may be in your family, there's two or three things I can offer. Smartbus.org has a curb-to-curb -curb service called ABA service. It involves an application process, but if you qualify, you can get picked up by a bus right at your front door and get dropped off. Same thing for your ride home. And that's available with the smartbus.org. So you filled out an application with the smartbus people? I, we didn't, but we can. Yes, you, you do fill out an application. Do we have some access to that? How do we... Uh, Smartbus.org. Smartbus.org. Yes. Great. And the other are the easy ones like Uber and Lyft. Yeah. 
that costs you a little fee. Uh, there may be resources to pick up the tab for that. And I don't have information on that, but that's worth pursuing. We're going to pursue this subject down the line anyway again, so maybe we can put that all together. Gotcha. Uh, also, your question on length of work hours. While most jobs in, in our world are not full days or not full weeks, and these may be negotiable based on the, the uh, employer, MRS works with employers that are very, very willing to bend and because they have incentives. There are tax incentives. There are actual dollars incentives because uh, our employees may be lower functioning, yet they are receiving a minimum wage. And right now that amount is $9.65 an hour. But you're not going to get $9.65 an hour worth of uh, fast-running labor, so there are compensations for that. There are other higher functioning uh, options, like such as Asperger's people. Uh, they may have normal hours and and work full days and full weeks. And I got a, a mention; it's been in the news recently. The Autism Alliance of Michigan is has and is actively right now seeking higher performers, uh, and and recently has employed several at the Ford Motor Company. Ford is very pleased. They're thrilled because these people are very creative and they're very dedicated and they're very dependable. And we're talking about the higher functioning Asperger's type. Mainly this is computer-based, but nevertheless, it's a very good example of, of a source for work. Thank you for those examples. Parental fear of loss of benefits is a fear that is always looming. Can you touch on some facts that may help quell parents' fears at this time? Well, uh, first of all, I can tell you right today, unrestricted, I'm sorry, not today, but this was 2018 numbers, the last I can look at it, you can uh, have your disabled person make $850 a month without disturbing any of their benefits. It's unrestricted. In addition to that, there are also special arrangements that you can actually reach $2,000 a month and not affect your benefits or affect them very little. Like I said, in the very near future, we're going to speak specifically to that subject. So I'm glad you mentioned that. The last thing I want to uh, tell you in the, in the case of loss of benefits, uh, the MRS program has a benefit planning program. You contact them on the telephone number I gave you, and they may be able to guide you on your uh, disabled individual's ability to stay away from uh, losing their benefits. And uh, there's one last thing I'd like to talk about before you close, Mike, is I would like to tell you one of the greatest resources that everybody's going to have, and it's your community mental health. That's the board that I am currently functioning on. I want to read to you the mission. Macomb County's community mental health, guided by the values, strength, and informed choices of the people we serve, provides quality services which promote recovery, community participation, self-sufficiency, and independence. And they're, they're serious. I'm in there. I took an oath. I'm promised, I promise to help people that are disabled. And I'm serious about it. Yes, you and are. I think there are 11 other board members that do the same thing. Uh, in case you're interested uh, in a telephone, it's 586-469-5275. And their website is mccmh.net. And uh, incredibly, you can attend board meetings. They are all public. You can hear what we're talking about. You can actually stand up and speak your, your mind. There are two places in every board agenda that lets the public come in and speak. And when you see that mccmh.net, 
If you find community resources, click on that, and then click down the calendar of events, and you'll find where our board meetings are. Appreciate that. Well, your advocacy endeavors and fighting the good fight goes on. Unfortunately, this session must end just for now, but we welcome our audience comments on this series and would like to know what they thought and if there's more they want us to cover in terms of advocacy, employment, SSI, SSDI, information, etc. Again, contact us by email to podcasts at le-academy.org. So, Tony, just so you know that we're not going to let you escape us that easy. We like to have you back and include your son, Ron, on one of LEA Shelby's finest. Until then, take care. Thank you. I got to tell you ahead of time, Mike, before you make that decision, he's a ham and he's a comedian. And it shocks the people that knew him when he was six years old and couldn't even speak. And today he's a total joy. He came out of that autism jail that he was in, still has some of it, but he's progressed quite a lot. And LEA has been an important piece of that. Looking forward to having him with us. Thank you.